Hello, my name is Karen Wakelin and I'm one of the Improvement and Development Managers at Social Care Wales. This presentation is going to take you through adaptations made to the assessment of health and social care qualifications. So most people will be aware of the changes which were made for the achievement of GCSE and A-level qualifications, but little was heard about vocational qualifications. When COVID-19 hit in March 2020, we were asked to work with Qualifications Wales and the consortium, which is City and Gills and WJC, to consider short-term adaptations for the assessment of qualifications. This was a particular issue for learners undertaking courses within further education. We've all had more time to consider the issues and the adaptations initially used have now been refined. This presentation is going to focus on adaptations for the Level 2 Health and Social Care Core Qualification and the Level 2 and 3 Health and Social Care Practice Qualifications. The new Level 4 and 5 qualifications were only available from September 2020, so we'll be looking at any adaptations which may be needed for these later in the year. All of the adaptations described today will apply to the older QCF diploma qualifications if learners had not yet completed these. So before we consider the assessment adaptations, I think it'll be helpful to recap on the assessment arrangements in more normal times. Learners may undertake their qualifications either through a further education college, a work-based learning provider, or something called an in-house assessment centre. Whichever route is used, the assessor is responsible for making the arrangements for the learner to be assessed. The formal assessment is made up of three case studies and a multi-choice question test. And these cover principles and values, health and wellbeing, professional practice, safeguarding and health and safety. And learners can undertake either an adults, children, young people or a combined pathway. There are a selection of scenarios available for the case studies to reflect the range of roles in the sector. The case studies can be downloaded two weeks before the formal assessment takes place. This gives workers time to revise and prepare. The assessment then takes place in something called controlled conditions. This differs across different assessment centres, but examples would be a quiet office space, a classroom, or a training room with the assessor present. The worker has a number of questions to answer on the case study based on the sections that are being tested, for example, safeguarding and principles and values. They're able to take in an A4 sheet of notes with them. If workers fail to achieve the marks needed to pass the assessment, they can undertake it again using the case, same case study, but with different questions. Details about the total number of times they can be retested for each case study is included in the qualification specification, which can be found on the Health and Care Learning website. Once workers have achieved all three case studies, they can undertake the multi-choice question test, again, under control conditions. This is an online test, but it can be completed on paper if this is requested in advance. There are sample multi-choice question tests, case studies and expected answers available on the Health and Care Learning Wales website, and these will help managers and workers know what to expect. The assessor must make sure the learners had sufficient teaching and learning provided to them to prepare adequately for the assessment because we want to make sure they've got the very best possible chance of passing. The workbooks developed for the All Wales Induction Framework for Health and Social Care can help with this because they've got case studies and questions typical of those in the actual tests. They will discuss and agree the learner's readiness for assessment with both the learner and their manager. More detailed information on the content can be found on the Health and Care Learning Wales website and you'll find links on the notes page of this presentation. Copies of the workbooks can be found on the induction framework pages of the Social Care Wales website. So 
So, what has changed? The number of assessments learners needed to complete was temporarily reduced. Um, that is, learners registered before the 31st of August 2020 and who will complete their qualification by the 18th of December 2020 only need to complete one case study and a multi-choice question, or if they do in the combined pathway, two case studies and one multi-choice question test. In exceptional circumstances, learners can complete either two case studies for the single pathway or three case studies for the combined pathway and no multi-choice question test. This was put in place to make sure that learners were not disadvantaged as a result of COVID-19 restrictions, particularly where assessment centres had been closed. So retaining integrity. It's really important to ensure that whatever adaptations are put in place, the qualifications retain their integrity. Therefore, City and Guilds and WJC have put measures in place to ensure all learners have completed learning across all of the qualification and the assessor has carried out formative assessment to ensure that the learner is ready for the formal assessment for all parts of the qualification, that is, the case studies and multi-choice question test. All learners registered after the 1st of September, or those who cannot complete by the 18th of December, must undertake the full assessment process. That is, all of the case studies and the multi-choice question test. And this is because many centres have now put things in place which ensure safe environments for learners to complete their tests under controlled conditions. The next slide is going to explore what can happen if this is not the case. So what if there are further restrictions and learners cannot access environments where assessments can take place under control conditions? So option one, the centre can reschedule if the length of delay is up to four months. Option two, the learner can undertake a remote verbal and question answer for the case studies if the centre is closed for longer than four months. The qualification is needed for progression either for the learner's course or for their employment, or the learner needs to self-quarantine. There's also something called remote inv invigilation. So city and guilds are undertaking a pilot over the coming months, so tests can take place without the assessor being in the same physical space. Remote invigilation will enable learners to complete online test sessions in one of two ways, that is, live invigilation or record and test away from their approved centre. A key element of the process will be the authentication of the learner through key codes and email addresses prior to the commencement of the online test. This will reduce the need for learners to complete their case studies or multi-choice question tests in the centre itself and recording will be used to check the learner is not using additional materials or resources to answer the questions such as mobile phones or textbooks, etc. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the level two and three health and social care practice qualifications now and the adaptations that have been made for assessment of these. Again, we're going to recap on the assessment arrangements in more normal times before we look at what has changed. So for these qualifications, the assessment would take place over a period of six to 12 months. And that would include a structured task, which is made up of a set of four plans, which show how the learner contributes to the support of an individual in their role. Each plan needs to have a different focus that reflects the scope of the role. The assessor then carries out four observations of the learner, taking into consideration how they prepare for and provide support. They'll question the learner to sample their knowledge and understanding. The plans are agreed between the learner, the assessor and the manager to make sure that they're suitable. The learner will also have a portfolio of evidence that's not covered by this structured task and they will complete a reflective log of their practice during the assessment period. 
and then there's a final discussion and that helps the assessor confirm or consolidate any gaps in evidence. So at level two, areas which are considered across all of the assessment activities are person-centered approaches, rights-based approaches, communication and active participation. At level three, areas that are considered across all of the assessment activities are person or child-centered approaches, rights-based approaches, active participation, physical health and well-being, mental health and well-being, communication and personal, social, emotional and behavioural support. So what has changed? Observation of practice is central to the assessment of the health and social care practice qualifications in exactly the same way as for other professions, for example, a nurse, a doctor or a teacher. Observation of practice is essential to confirm the competence needed to achieve the qualification. In addition to the four observations detailed on the last slide, the new qualifications require two pre-assessment observations just to confirm that the learner is ready to undertake the formal assessment. As many care settings are not able to support access to assessors as a result of COVID-19 restrictions and safety issues, it has been agreed from September 2020 until June 2021, where observations of practice cannot take place, a suitably experienced employer, manager or leader can undertake the role of an expert witness. The expert witness will be expected to observe the learner in practice. This will be followed by a remote professional discussion between the assessor, the learner and the expert witness. The assessor will be able to ask questions of both the learner and the expert witness to make decisions of competency for achievement of the qualification. So the expert witness is really um, being the eyes and the ears of the assessor for those observations. The assessor will be responsible for making the final judgment and would triangulate evidence from across the assessment tasks, for example, looking at the reflective log, the portfolio, looking at the expert witness testimonies and the professional discussion to make sure that they all correlate. So there's some criteria which is set for expert witnesses, and they must have a working knowledge of the qualification or the units for which they're giving testimony. They need to be occupationally competent in their area of expertise to at least the same level of the qualification or the units for which they're providing testimony. And they must have either any qualification in assessment of workplace performance or a professional work role, which involves evaluating the everyday practice of staff. City and Guilds will provide training for expert witnesses. The assessor must provide through guidance as to what they need to be looking for throughout the observation and how this will be recorded. Learning providers are expected to work in partnership with employers and they're also asked to consider if observations can take place, allocating assessors to specific employment settings with an attempt to keep the number of assessors to a minimum to reduce footfall. Separating activities around planning, reviewing and progress checks that can be completed remotely. Opportunities to access the service setting can then prioritise observational assessment activities. Capturing the capabilities of all within a setting to support assessment. For example, using work-based assessors that might not have um, uh, been engaged in that role for some time. Making use of outdoor environments for outside observation where possible and appropriate. All of the adaptations will be reviewed in June 2021. If some of these have been successful, they may be retained. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, the same adaptations are applied to the older qualifications as well. For example, QCF level two, three and five diplomas for health and social care. So just to finish off, and to recap on some top tips really for supporting observations as an employer. Where outdoor activities are happening, use these op opportunities for observation. 
may be select activities which would need to be observed to confer competence within their a role, for example, administration of medication, moving and positioning, etc. Negotiate agreements with assessors for them to maybe spend block number of days at the setting, with some time spent undertaking observations and the rest engaging in practice as a means of updating their CPD. They could then be counted as an additional member of staff for a period of time on placement at the setting. Work with the assessor to undertake the risk assessment and measures to mitigate these. Some employers might be able to arrange redeployment of assessors for a period of time where they have in-house assessment centres and only have the assessor in the setting for observations, do all of the planning, etc. using digital technology. If you have any feedback on this process, please let us know. Thank you very much for listening.